Hello everyone, welcome to today's US Open live webinar. It is Tuesday, January 31st, 10 minutes before US markets open. This is your host, Nikos Zaburas, Senior Market Specialist at FXM. Today we're going to change things up a little bit as we're going to focus mostly on the upcoming um, bank decisions, central bank decisions from the US Fed, the European Central Bank and the Bank of England. Uh, we're also going to talk a, a little bit about a few other things such as the earnings um, that we expect this week. But once again, we're going to focus on central banks in this edition of US Open Live webinar. Before we begin, however, as always, please read through the disclaimers carefully and then we will get started. Once again, I urge you to read through the risk disclaimer and the risk warning carefully before we can begin. Okay, so let's get uh, the ball rolling. It's an exciting uh, week. As we said, this is a central bank's edition because we expect uh, the decisions from the Fed on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we got the Bank of England and the European Central Bank. And that's what we're going to focus on this week, changing things up from our usual schedule. However, a few things first. It's also a big week in terms of earnings. Tech heavyweights such as Meta, Apple, Amazon, and Alphabet. Alphabet of the, uh, the four remainder of the FANGS uh, group, what is commonly referred as to the FANGS group. Uh, the other one, the fifth is Netflix, which has already released its results. So we have already posted a video analysis of these uh, companies uh, earlier in the week. You can uh, find that for more insights on our uh, on FXCM's YouTube channel and on the respective uh, market analysis websites uh, of your regions. Uh, just very quickly to say that um, it's been a bad year for the tech sector, but things starting to look up at least in terms of stock performance at the beginning of this year. We had a series of layoffs from many uh, big tech names and focus during this uh, upcoming earnings reports uh, will be definitely on the advertisement segment and on the cloud uh, segment as well very quickly among other things again you can follow the video on uh, for more on that big automakers from the US are also in the spotlight uh, over the next day we expect Ford just a few days after it announced price cuts and production increase for its electric Mach, Mustang Mach E. Earlier today, we had rival General Motors reporting strong results 23.4 revenue rise year over year in 2022. Uh, although profits uh, remained stagnant, actually, they were marginally lower. We had other uh, companies as well, such as Spotify, all strong results. Uh, Ford, um, General Motors, and Spotify are up in pre market. Now, in other news, before we begin with the central banks, uh, the International Monetary Fund upgraded its 2023 global growth forecast to 2.9. That's up from 2.7% in the October outlook, but it's still below uh, the 3.4% estimated for 2022. Also, from today's news, we got an expansion in China's factory activity. For the first time since September, while retail sales from Australia and Germany disappointed market mood, despite encouraging news, is um, uh, quite cautious. We see some improvement uh, over the last um, few minutes. Um, as 
markets brace for the central bank blitz and that's what we're going to focus on today so starting from the u.s federal reserve rate standard for 0.25 4.50 range this is the highest since 2007 2007 uh the fed runs its most aggressive tightening cycle in at least three decades having produced four uh 125 basis points worth of rate hikes last year However, in December, it moderated the pace of tightening with a 0.5 increase, down shifting from a series of outsized 75 BBS hikes. Uh, despite this down shift, it maintained, a very ho it maintained a very hockey stance and guidance for further moves ahead. And in fact, its projections were upgraded and officials now see immediate terminal rate of 5.1%. Now, uh, the decision is on Wednesday. Markets price in another moderation with a 25 basis points rate increase, as in, uh, in CME's Fed Watch tool. And we haven't seen any meaningful pushback from the Fed despite the overall hockey stance during the last communication, uh, during the last round of speeches uh, before the blackout period. In fact, some members, um, such as Governor Waller and Harker, who is a voter this year, have embraced such a small increase. Now, the question is, here is can the Fed surprise and go bigger? I'm pretty sure that some members would like to go bigger than 25 and send a strong message, but uh, given the Fed's track, track record to not surprise markets, that seems uh, highly unlikely. Of course, we cannot uh, rule it out. Now, markets also expect rates to peak at 5%. So that would mean this 25 BPS hike and one more, whereas the Fed's projections would imply three such moves. Uh, and more to it, markets also expect rate cuts towards the end of the current year. The Fed uh, does not have a, such intentions as the last. Uh, and as the accounts of the last policy meeting also uh, showed. So a bigger move at this stage would seem like a, an overreaction. However, we would expect the Fed to uh, maintain its hawkish guidance. We don't think that it will throw the towel uh, so easily. And it does seem that market have grow, mar markets have grown a bit um, wary of um, such potential hawkish signals. And it will be also interesting to see, as we said, future guidance, apart from the move itself, and if we're going to get any dissenters, any voting against the majority. So uh, that in regards to the Federal Reserve, of course, if you have any questions or any opinions uh, on the matter, you can uh, type those in in the chat box. So now let's move to the Bank of England. Rates stand at 3.5%, highest since 2008. Uh, in a process, in a tightening cycle that started a little uh, just at the end of 2021. Back in December, it slowed its pace of tightening with a 0.5% move, climbing down from a historic 75 basis points increase. As a prolonged recession is projected and inflation is high. Um, the latest data show that the economy contracted 0.3% quarter over quarter in Q3. Headline CPI moderated still remains in double digits, while core was 
uh, still stake it. Now, the bank has hinted to uh, further increases, but uh, communication is, let's say, a bit murky. Uh, the Bank of England has never done a really good job at that recently. So I think there is room for surprise out of all the three banks. This is probably the one that is more uncertain, uncertain due to this murky guidance and uh, the divisions among policy makers. So last time uh, there were two dissenters. Actually, there were three dissenters, two of those out of the nine members. Two of those voted for a pause whereas one descended for a bigger hike. So those two that wanted to pause, um, it, it would seem strange to not want to pause again uh, at this uh, meeting. And I wouldn't be surprised if there were more uh, added to them. Now, baseline expectations for markets are for another 0.5 increase, which would bring rates to uh, 4%. Interesting enough, Mr. Bailey recently noted that Although he's not endorsing market, expect, market expectation for a terminal rate of 4.5%, the bank, he noted that the bank has dropped its previous pushback against this level. So maybe this gives us an idea that the Fed has more, the, the DOE, sorry, has more um, room to um, increase rates. Again, um, uncertain now to look here for the Bank of England because of murky guidance and divisions among policy makers. And of course, we also expect the updated projections from the bank, so that will be interesting to see. Uh, the vote count will be, again, interesting, other than, of course, the decisions, the decision itself. And uh, let's uh, round things off with the European Central Bank. The deposit facility rate is at 2%, the highest again since 2008. Last month, the, uh, the bank delivered a smaller 50 BPS increase, but delivered very hawkish high guidance. And in fact, we had then uh, commented on how the ECB out hawked um, the Federal Reserve with its uh, aggressive guidance. This guidance was for at least one more uh, 50 BPS increase, meaning in this uh, meeting on Thursday. And recent comments uh, from Fed, from many uh, ECB officials, show that that's where they are, and actually they would see two more um, such moves. Of course, the ECB is held by uh, recent encouraging data, PMIs. Uh, today, uh, we got preliminary uh, Q4 GDP readings that showed that the Eurozone avoided a recession. A recession. Uh, and the mild world there is also uh, helpful. Inflation showed some signs of phasing, but it's still far off from where it needs to be. Markets are on board with uh, the ECB's um, guidance, at least for this meeting, and baseline forecasts are for a 0.5 increase. The central bank is very unclear around the terminal rate, uh, so we will be uh, looking forward to see if we get anything more out of it, but pretty, I have pretty much given uh, any hope. One interesting uh, comment came from Mr. Villaroy recently, actually, at the at its New Year's address, at his New Year's address. Um, the ACB member said that ideally, uh, peak rate should be reached by summer. So where we stand, we have one meeting tomorrow, then one in March, and then one in May before we move into June. So he would essentially expect three uh, hikes in total. Again, other than the decision, we will be looking forward to uh, President Lagarde's 
always interesting press conference. Now, before we uh, go, let's take a quick look at uh, EURUSD and NAS100. So EURUSD, we can see here that it faces some difficulties this week and uh, today, but find some support after rejecting 50% uh, Fibonacci of the 2021 high 2022 low drop here. Uh, find some support as the uh, US traders enter. Of course, everything is going to come down to the policy decisions. Now, the fact that markets expect a downshift from the Fed quite strongly does leave some room for um, disappointment, I think, not so much for the rate decision itself as for the policy uh, commentary. Now, there is some risk, obviously, here for further pressure towards the 200 period EMA, but again, a surprise from the Fed would be uh, needed for daily close below this uh, level, we think. Uh, as the stage bulls are clearly in control and can push for higher highs, but we're still causes for sustained uh, strength above 1.167. 1 uh, and let's take a look at NAS 100, who started, uh, future started the day poorly, but now um, pushing to profit the ter territory held by the uh, strong. Um, earnings report we saw today. We already talked about that. In any case, uh, bulls are in control here too. Policy is supportive at this stage. Actually, expectations for um, a less aggressive Fed and a pivot, we, it remains to be seen if this will be disappointed. There is room again here for higher highs, but uh, the 12,883 resistance seems far at this point. Point there is some risk given recent um, pullback uh, for further pressure towards this region here, but uh, that provides a strong base and it will need a strong catalyst for um, convincing moves below this level. Once again, uh, it's a big week in terms of central banks and other news, not only these ones. So caution is needed for um, uh, volatility. Uh, and um, in general market movement. That's it for me with this, uh, let's call it special central banks editions of uh, the US Open Live webinar. We'll talk again on Thursday in two days uh, at 14.20 GMT as usual, 10 minutes before um, the US Open. Thank you for joining me.